Right, this video is for Unit 5.4 on Bacterial Genomics. So just a little bit of an overview of bacteria in general first so that you remember just some things we've talked about in the past with these guys. First of all, the bacterial cell is a very simple cell. It's called a prokaryote because it doesn't have a nucleus. Uh, it has a cell membrane around the edge and sometimes, oftentimes, it also has what is considered a cell wall, although it's not identical to a plant cell wall. It has little ribosomes that are scattered around inside of it. Ribosomes, remember, are for reading messenger RNA to make protein. And then, most importantly, since it doesn't have a nucleus, it has usually a ring-shaped uh, section of DNA in the middle of it. So the DNA is usually in a circular structure like that. So there's a pretty simple bacteria, not a whole lot more to it than that. The reason we're interested in it in our genetics unit is because bacteria can undergo something called transformation. And this is when they are able to change in genotype which then of course changes their phenotype or their um, structures, their traits due to incorporation of foreign DNA. So in other words, they can grab DNA or get DNA from other cells and bring it into their own genome, into their own DNA that will then affect how they operate as a cell. So this has some really interesting implications for genetics then, and we'll get into more of that later. But first I want to talk about how this transformation could take place. The first way the transformation could take place is something called transduction. So these steps outline how transduction happens, and I'll just kind of briefly outline what's going on here. This little guy up here, is a bacteriophage. It's a virus that affects bacteria. Okay, so it infects bacteria, just like the viruses you're studying right now infect your cells. This is specific to bacterial cells. And as you can see, the virus is inserting some of its DNA right here. And then this brown ring is the bacterial chromosome or the bacterial DNA. Remember, so there's a ring stripe structure for that DNA. So um, if we're going to label this step, basically we can say the bacteriophage, which I'll uh, shorthand BP, inserts its DNA. That's step one. In step two here, you can see how the DNA of the virus has made some proteins that chop up the bacterial DNA. So the bacterial DNA is degraded so the bacterial DNA remember is that chromosome in brown in step 3 you can see there are some new viruses that have formed most of them have this blue viral DNA in them which is what we'd expect right viruses want to package their own DNA but because the bacterial DNA has also been chopped up you see one of these viruses has bacterial DNA in it. So viruses carry bacterial DNA. Now we move on to a new cell. Here's that virus that was carrying that bacterial DNA from bacteria cell number one up here. This is cell number one. And now it's going to infect cell number two. And when it does, it's inserting not its own DNA into the cell, but it's inserting bacterial DNA from host cell number one. So bacteria inserts, oh, sorry, back up, the macrophage, or the bacteriophage. So BP inserts bacteria DNA
into a new cell. And now you can see down here at the bottom, there's a little stretch of that brown DNA from cell number one in bacterial cell number two. So the new DNA combines with the cell's DNA. So this is an example of transformation because we had a piece of DNA that did not belong to the second bacterial cell down here get injected into it. And you think that DNA carries genes and traits and all sorts of information that tells the bacterial cell what to do. So this virus can be used to insert different DNA into the bacterial cell. So that's called transduction. The second type of transformation that can occur happens naturally between two different bacterial cells. It's called con conjugation and then recombination. And notice over here on the side, these are the words I'm going to be using. So I might not write them all out, but I might say them. So now you know how to spell them if you need to label anything. So just to kind of give you a roadmap of where we are here, we have two bacterial cells here, one and two. And their chromosomes, or their DNA in a ring here, are in two different colors so that we can keep track of which DNA belongs to which cell. But that's just the normal bacterial chromosome there in a ring as the DNA. This little blue guy over here is a new thing that we haven't talked about yet. Besides their main chromosome, um, cells, bacterial cells, can also carry along what's called a plasmid. A plasmid is a small ring of DNA. It's not the whole chromosome, so you couldn't control a whole bacteria with a plasmid, but it does carry a couple of genes on it. So a very small chunk of DNA. So this plasmid in particular that we're looking at in this uh, diagram is called the F plasmid. So I'm at my first word on the list here. So this blue thing is the F plasmid. And it's a special plasmid because what it allows to happen is this little bridge here between these two bacterial cells. So the F plasmid codes for the proteins that allow this bridge to form. So if this top cell has the F plasmid, which it does, it can form bridges with other bacterial cells. We call that the mating bridge. It's not really like they're mating, but it kind of describes the process. Basically, they're just connecting to each other. So that's what's going on in number one here. So we've got the F plasmid uh, is there in that top bacteria cell, so it can form a mating bridge with another one. Uh, we talked about the chromosomes too as well, right? So the chromosomes are brown and green in these examples. All right, moving then down to the next um, picture, what's going on here is one of the strands of the double-stranded plasmid, remember this is DNA, so one of the strands is kind of unspooling off of the plasmid, kind of like you would unroll or roll a tape. And as it's unspooling and moving into that bottom cell, it's actually copying itself as well, or being copied. So we're making a copy of double-stranded DNA. So let's label some of these for you. First, the mating bridge is formed. Second, we copy the plasmid. And as you can see, by the time we get down here, we have one, two copies of our plasmid. And then the mating bridge breaks, and they're done. So that first part is just kind of a description of how the plasmid could move from cell to cell. So the plasmid itself, the F plasmid, codes for this connection between these two cells and it gets replicated into the new cell. Alright, so the next step down here is talking about what type of interactions can happen once that plasmid is in that new cell. So here's the plasmid in the new cell. It can combine with the original chromosome that's in that cell. So the plasmid joins the chromosome. 
Um, so there we go. Okay, so now it's actually part of the bacterial uh, genome. So it's part of everything that gets copied when the bacteria makes a copy of itself. So that plasmid is right in there as part of the DNA. So then this type of um, bacterial cell no longer has an F plasmid, but it still has the F factor in it, right? So somewhere in here is that F factor that codes for the proteins that allow that mating bridge to be formed. So if we follow down to the third row here, here's that cell we just made that's got the bacterial genome with the F factor on it, so it can form this mating bridge. It's connected to a second bacteria with its own chromosome in green here, right? Here's the bacterial chromosome. Because it has the S F factor, it forms the mating bridge. Now it's going to replicate its whole strand of DNA. So its whole chromosome now is going to come in to that new cell and it's going to make a copy of it. So then when we're done, you have a copy up here and a copy down here of not just the plasmid, but the whole chromosome. So let's again kind of write down what happens here. So first we get the mating bridge. And this time, as I said, instead of just copying the plasmid, copy the entire chromosome. So now it's not just that plasmid's genes that are in the new cell, it's all the genes of that original bacteria cell are in the second bacteria cell. And what can happen is these two sets of DNA, those two chromosomes, can actually cross over we talked about that a little bit in 10th grade biology, how chromosomes can cross over and they stick to each other and they swap genes. So these two chromosomes can cross over and now once again, you've gotten into the normal genome of that second bacteria, new genes or different genes that can affect how that bacteria operates. We are gonna use these a lot in the future. So I want you to give you one more word that you need to remember that goes with that. Those new um, combinations of DNA after crossing over is called recombinants or recombination. And that's how we get those new genes, is through the recombination of those bacterial chromosomes. Okay, as I said, we'll move on to using these more as we do labs in class, but for now make sure you answer the questions that go after this video so I can see how well you're understanding it.